Good morning, Emmanuel. We are happy that you're joining us this Friday for our Good Friday service. We want to let you know that we'll be having communion later in the service, so please make sure to have grape juice and a wafer or cracker ready um, for that time. Let us reflect on Jesus' death and the sacrifice that he made for us this Friday. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And again in 1 John we read, Dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how he showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. Let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you for sending your son. We thank you for the sacrifice that he made for us. Help us to understand and appreciate at a deeper level what Jesus Christ has done to purchase our freedom. Amen. We are invited to come to the cross, to kneel down and look up, to feel the rough weight of the wood and the cold iron of the nails. We are invited to pray, to repent, to grieve, yet also rejoice, for the cross is at once the most cursed and most blessed of earthly objects. This instrument of death for our Lord Jesus Christ became the vessel of life for each of us. Eternally speaking, today is indeed Good Friday. So come to Calvary, come to the cross to offer thanks.
It was a day of preparation of Passion Week, Friday. Jesus had endured a night of unimaginable pain, betrayal and denial at the hands of his friends, torture and ridicule at the hands of his enemies. That morning he stood on a balcony before the very people he had come to save. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, take him away, crucify him. They led him away to the place of the skull called Golgatha, carrying his own cross. It was a road that had been prepared for Jesus since man first turned away from a loving God. It was a road that was beset with hardship and heartache. Yet, Jesus boldly made the journey shouldering the weight of the world's sin. The road had been cut from the wilderness by the searing words of ancient prophets. They foretold much more to the Messiah's coming. They described his suffering, his death, and the ultimate redemptive purpose. The road to Calvary is the only road by which we can return to the open arms of our Heavenly Father. He was despised and rejected by man a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. He was oppressed and afflicted, he was led like a lamb to the slaughter. For Jesus was pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. And by his wounds we are healed. Come, walk the road to the cross, and offer thanks for the one who walked before us. After the long and arduous journey, Jesus arrived at the place of the skull. 
His body, pierced by thorns and nails, was bound to the rough timbers he had carried upon his back. The light began to fade as Jesus' cross was slowly raised against the blackening sky. Standing beneath the cross were those that loved him, those that hated him, and those that did not understand. Many grieved, others gloated, and some felt that the forces of darkness had won. But the victory belonged to Christ alone. He had willingly accepted this end to his earthly life so that our lives might start anew. Draw near to the cross. Listen to the last words of our beloved Savior. They were spoken for us. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified Jesus along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. By your forgiveness, we are made clean. Thank you for the cross, Lord. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. By your grace, we will share paradise with you. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciples whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son, and to the disciple, here is your mother. By your love, we become children of our Heavenly Father. Thank you for the cross, Lord. At the sixth hour, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. At the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? By your sacrifice, we are reconciled to God. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Later, knowing that all was now complete, and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. By your suffering, we are healed. Thank you for the cross, Lord. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. And by your obedience, we stand redeemed. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. By your death, we shall live. Thank you for the cross, Lord. to read. 
reach and save the weak and small and wrap your arms around them all when love lay down upon the cross hope sprang up and called out to us sin's great debt now satisfied Jesus paid the highest prize. O'er mountains high and valleys low, your voice has led me through them all. Scars and sorrows can erase All because my shepherd king Came and paid the price for me Bidding shepherds sacrifice Thou hast paid to Jesus paid the highest price. Sin's great debt now satisfied. Jesus paid the highest This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? I am convinced that neither death nor life will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends.
please pray with me. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for choosing to die for us so that we may live. May we never boast except in your cross, for we have been crucified with you and no longer live, but you live in us. Amen. restore the broken. We give thanks for his unfailing love. As part of his work of healing us, he invites us to come to his table to remind us of his love, invite us into his grace, and extend to us his renewal. So we remember at this last meal with his friends before he died that he shared with them bread and the cup. So let us prepare for this communion service as we pray. Let us pray together. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for sending your son Jesus. We thank you that he was faithful and obedient even unto death, that he gave his body for us, that he suffered and died so that we might be set free from sin and enter into a, a restored relationship with you, one that leads us even into eternal life. As we partake of this cup and this bread this morning, we pray that these symbols would remind us of the suffering, the death of our Savior and Lord Jesus. 
So we receive these this morning with gratitude and thanksgiving in our hearts. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus took bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Take, eat in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. As often as we drink it, we do so in remembrance of his blood shed for us. Take the cup in remembrance of him. And so we eat and we drink and we remember the sacrifice of Jesus, which makes us whole. Join me as we pray. God, thank you for your sacrifice that you've done for us on Good Friday. We pray that we would remember and reflect upon what you've done for us. The act of shedding of your blood brings us life. We pray that we would remember this throughout our day, that we would understand the significance of this, understand how this changes everything. May we remember what you've done for us this Good Friday and everything that you've done in the past and will do for us as well. In your name we pray, amen.
and now be dismissed with God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.